of June 29, 2016. Councilmember Chapman, your prayer a moment on reflection, please. Flag salute, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coast, and the Star Ledger on January 6, 2016, and posted on the bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file in the city clerk. Next item is a presentation of a proclamation to Mount Carmel Church. We'll move on uh, to matters from the City Council. I have a couple. You want to start first? Yeah. Proclamation. Um, this past week, um, Lou, how do you pronounce his name, Facilia? Parisi. Parisi. Okay, I get names mixed up. Had his 91st birthday, and I think that. Um, a proclamation also will be in order for him, like the council to think about that. Yeah, from the VFW, they have put a lot of time in, 
a good man, good-hearted man, and he thinks of the world of Asbury Park. So I'd like to think about a request, make a request for a proclamation for him. Um, I also like to um, bring this to the council and uh, city manager attention. I can recall years ago when I was in college, I used to run up one of the biggest stores in Nebraska when I was attending the school. And one of the things that I did, and I got a lot of quality out work out of the guys, the people that worked there, was to have um, employee of the month. And I, I'd be in the city hall just about it every day. And I see some good things going on, a lot of people working hard. And i like for us to consider this. I know I brought it up before, but it really haven't touched home yet. But I'd like for you to think about that because it would help, I think it would, I think it'd be rewarding if you know that people care about you. And I have seen people step out on this when they um, know that they're gonna get an award or they be working before, working for that goal. Uh, just a picture or whatever you wanna think of, whatever you wanna do, city manager, mayor, and council, but I think it'll be rewarding for that. And I'm gonna just save the rest for another time. Thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we'd like to reactivate the Sunset Lake Commission. Sorry. So we'd like to reactivate the Sunset Lake Commission. All right, try it again. We'd like to reactivate the Sunset Lake Commission, and so we're looking for any residents who are interested in serving on that committee to uh, submit applications to the city clerk, Cindy Dye, um, and we'll, I guess, have a two-week two week window for that opportunity and hope to be able to plan a meeting in July. That's it. And the other thing I'd like to uh, just acknowledge Bob Stewart, the uh, director of our Asbury Park Library who just uh, was recently um, given a prestigious award in Atlantic City as a remarkable librarian and library director who has built a comprehensive and impressive body of preservation work at several institutions. Bob was also instrumental in creating the New Jersey Caucus Archival Programs Evaluation Service, which is, um, it's, a, it's an important service that the State Historical Commission requires that organizations seeking funding for archival preservation activities much ha must have a CAPE survey in order to qualify for funding. And Bob was instrumental in um, bringing that um, caucus to New Jersey and getting that passed. That's it. Um, I'd like to thank everybody that came out Monday night for the uh, first concert in the new Springwood Avenue <coughs> Park. It was a great time. People were dancing on the stage. We had a wonderful evening. There are going to be concerts every Monday night from now through August. So please come out, different genre of music, so you'll have an opportunity to find something that you'll enjoy. And just come out and share the time with us. We'll all have a lot of fun together. So I just have two things. I wanted to give credit to um, the three Asbury bars that um, raised money for the Orlando victims, and that's Paradise, Tides, and Georgie's, who held a fundraiser in a very, very short period of time um, after the shooting in Orlando to um, provide some support for the survivors and victims of Orlando, and in one night raised over $22,000 with less than a week to plan the event. So I think that is a testament to the community in Asbury Park, and I uh, couldn't be more proud to be from a town that was able to send up $22,000. The other thing um, the city is working on doing to also show some support to Orlando is we are working with an organization called Sun Sunshine Girls, which is located in Manasquan. Um, the woman who runs it is Jacqueline Klosik, and I may be saying her name wrong. They are donating 49 trees and plaques to 
um, the city, where the city is going to put up plaques in the name of the 49 victims that were killed in Orlando, probably not till September. So the city and the Environmental Commission are working together to figure out where to put those trees and how we do it. Um, so that's coming down the pike as well. This is no, obviously this is to no cost to the city, right? These are all donations and volunteers. That's it. Okay, uh, I don't think the microphone's working. Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, on June 18th, we had the opening of the park and it, it was dedicated. So that was also a great day in Asbury. And then yesterday we found out that we received a $500,000 grant from the federal government uh, in conjunction with the housing authority, which is it was a very competitive and very desirable grant. I think 10 throughout the the country. I'm going to have Michelle Alonzo give a brief explanation about what this does for us and how we move forward. And this is this was a, a great win for the city. Okay, good evening. This was a, a grant that this council authorized authorized us to, in conjunction with the housing authority, to apply for a uh, last. January, this is a very competitive HUD grant. It's called Choice Neighborhoods. Only 10 municipalities in the country are awarded this grant, and we received a $500,000 planning grant. And the neighborhood chosen was the West Side neighborhood. Uh, this is different than some other planning grants in that it looks at planning not only on the land use perspective, but as holistic redevelopment, and that includes um, workforce development, affordable housing, and health initiatives. The also the, the very important part of this grant as well is if we succeed and do very well with the implementation, we are able to apply for a 1.5 million implementation grant. And that's of course to put into motion what the, what the planning report is going is going to not only the planning report but also some of our our initial activities we have many partners in this grant um many different organizations both in asbury park in the neighborhood and monmouth county teamed up with us to apply for this grant and they're expected to be partners in offering services in order to do do again do more than bricks and mortar in terms of redevelopment uh, so thank you, Mayor, for letting me explain this. I was, of as a planner, of course, I was very excited. And I have to say I'd applied for this grant in my previous position with Newark and did not get it. So I am more than excited that we, you know, we're one of 10 in the nation to get it. Thank you for your hard work. brought it up earlier um wi-fi on the beach right we've been talking about that up well before your time madison marquette's working on it working on it working on it it goes nowhere um can we get a hard deadline on the free wi-fi on the beach move on to matters from the city manager the first matter is special events thank you madam clerk uh, tonight there are three special events. One is the annual 4th of July fireworks um, hosted by Asbury Partners on the 4th of July with a rain date of July 8th. Um, the hours of that event are from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. The second application is the opening of the Asbury on July 7th with a rain date of July 14th. Those hours are also um, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. There will also be fireworks involved with that event. Both events have been um, reviewed by staff for the fireworks and have met all requirements. Um, and lastly is the Budweiser Clydesdale Jersey Shore Tour, which will also be on July 7th from 3 p.m. through 5 p.m. Um, this is being hosted by the Asbury Park Chamber of Commerce. And I'll ask Ms. Pappas if she wants to speak a little bit about that since it is such a interesting and unique event that is being done by the chamber. Uh, Jackie did fantastic work on getting the Clydesdales here. 
But those are the three events for your consideration tonight. Thank you. Do you want to say anything? Sure. Uh, we can find all the information on the Chamber website, but it's the first time in 15 years that the flag now returns to the Jersey Shore, and they actually requested to come to Asbury Park. So I think that is Next item is DLJ parking. Thank you. Uh, the parking committee has requested for the city staff to review parking along uh, Deal, at, Deal Lake at Drive Avenue areas. Um, part of this goes on to DOT property um, and right away by Main Street. The next meeting you'll have a formal recommendation. Um, we'll send out some informal notices, um, the engineer design um, the police reports in the next week or two, but I just wanted to be aware that this is going to be on everyone's radar for the next for the next meeting. That's all. Move on to matters from the city attorney. Um, he has summer rental ordinance revisions. Yes, council. There was an ordinance in your packets, and it's on the agenda for potential first reading this evening that would modify the city's existing summer uh, C of O ordinance. And I'm bringing this forward at the request of the Director of Property Improvement and the Zoning Officer. Um, the Summer CO or Summer Rental Ordinance was adopted back in 2014. It was Ordinance 3062. It's now uh, codified in Section 12-8 of the City Code. The intention was essentially to soften the requirements <laughs> associated with uh, the building and construction chapter of the city code that requires the city to conduct an inspection and issue a new certificate of occupancy prior to the new occupancy of any dwelling unit in the city, including a transfer of title or a new rental tenancy. Technically, the code requires this, whether the occupancy is temporary, seasonal, or permanent. So for each new occupancy, an inspection is required to ensure compliance with all aspects of the property maintenance code, the presence of smoke and carbon monoxide detectors, et cetera, and a new application for a CFO is required, and there's a $100 fee. Uh, that application for each new is required for each new change in tenancy. As I indicated, in 2014, the council at that time adopted the summer rental ordinance, and the intention was to make it easier for homeowners in Asbury Park to rent their homes out during the limited time period between Memorial Day and Labor Day and essentially to make Asbury Park a more desirable destination for summer visitors. Under the summer rental ordinance, if your property qualifies uh, as that term summer rental is defined in the ordinance, then you can apply for a summer rental license for a flat fee of $250 and have one inspection performed and then you would be eligible to rent out your home as many times as you wish between that period of Memorial Day and Labor Day without having to undergo a new inspection and get a new CFO every time there's a change in tenancy. Um, so <clears throat> the ordinance that was adopted in 2014 was modeled after one that I believe was in existence already in another short town, I believe it was Belmar. Since then, um, and as Esbury Park has become increasingly more popular, the number of property owners who are availing themselves of the summer rental ordinance has increased significantly. And according to the Director of Property Improvement and um, the Zoning Officer, this has caused a need to reevaluate some of the language contained in Section 12-8.1 of the code where the term summer rental is defined. At current, the term summer rental is defined to mean residential properties rented by uh, an owner or their agent for all or any portion of the time period between Memorial Day and Labor Day. That section further states that the term shall not apply to rooming houses or boarding houses 
And additionally, that section shall not apply to apartment units. They were specifically excluded. The ordinance, however, does not define the term apartment units. Recently, the Director of Property Improvement and Zoning Officer have been receiving applicants uh, from the owners of two-family homes and also from the owners of multi-unit structures in the city, those that contain three units or more. And they're seeking some clarification from the council uh, by way of a policy call um, and an amendment to the ordinance relating to these types of units. Specifically, a two-family home may not qualify to be considered a summer rental as at least one of the units um, would be an apartment, and apartments are specifically excluded from the definition of what constitutes a summer rental. But, um, according to our staff, if the owner resides in one of the two units, they don't see why the other apartment unit could not be rented out as a summer rental. Uh, the language that is proposed uh, would make it clear that this would be permitted. The proposed language would also make it clear that multi-family dwellings consisting of three or more units would not qualify and the proposed language would also insert a requirement that in order for a residential property to be a summer rental, it must be the primary residence of the owner. And that comes uh, from research that both the Director of Property Improvement and the Zoning Officer have performed um, relating to other municipalities that have gone in that direction in an effort to eliminate many of the issues relating to investors that are buying up properties and turning them into short-term rental units that are transient in nature with absentee landlords and those types of situations then lead to um, zoning issues, nuisance, overcrowding, parking, um, and whatnot. Uh, the language that is proposed in the new ordinance is shown with underline. Nothing is coming out, just some new language is being put in, and this is the recommendation from uh, city staff, the director of uh, property improvement and zoning officer for your consideration. Ultimately, it's the council's call. Um, and it is on for your consideration later on in the meeting, but I wanted to preface it by giving you a full background of where it came from before we got there. Any other comments or questions? And I'd just like to also indicate one last note, and that is that if your property doesn't qualify as a summer rental, you can still rent it out as many times as you want to during the course of the summer or during other times of the year, but you just don't get the benefit of the pay one price $250 and one inspection. Then you just have to pay your $100 and have an inspection done each and every time that you turn it over to new tenants. And just Fred, correct me if I'm wrong, but e let's say you get the summer rental license, you rent it to a number of people over the summer, you still have to provide the city and the, and the code department with how many tenants are in there for safety purposes, you know, who, who, what new people are coming when they, all, all the things that we currently, you know, ask that you provide the code department. That's correct. And the summer rental ordinance, even though um, the property owners get the benefit of the pay one price and only one inspection, nevertheless, every time there is a new tenancy during the course of the summer, the property owner is affirmatively required under the ordinance to register the names um, and other pertinent information with the code enforcement department so as we can keep a roster of who's here for, for emergency, fire, and safety purposes, overcrowding, and whatnot. Do you have any other matters, Fred? No. And this is just the first reading tonight on the ordinance, Fred, It's right? listed for first reading. Again, it's at your discretion. It comes from um, Mr. McEwen and Ms. Van Wagner, and I was asked to um, present it to you this evening for your consideration. Okay. Um, we'll now move on to public participation. Well, here's, a, here's a question. Oh, Since we didn't have the workshop meeting, so we didn't ask questions about the agenda, which should we do that now or should we just wait for them to come up and ask the questions, move second, then ask the questions then? I don't care. How do you want to do it? Um, is there anything that you have questions on on the consent agenda? No. Uh, no. no. Okay, uh, then we can do it at the time. Well, each, I don't know. Each individual resolution. Oh. We only have a couple matters on the consent agenda. We have the business committee, special events, payroll. Nope, 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 nope. okay, I'm fine. Nope. Yeah, okay. Nope. Okay, thank you. All right, can I have a motion to open the meeting to the public then? Move it. Second. Second. All in favor? All opposed? 
The public is expected to conduct themselves in a proper manner. Any derogatory, abusive, or threatening statements will not be permitted. The chair will immediately rule such conduct out of order and appropriate warning may terminate any further comments from the speaker. Each speaker has three minutes to speak. Please state your name and address before you uh, ask, uh, speak. Hi, Rita Morano, 8th Avenue. I happened to attend the um, governor's conference yesterday, and he started to talk about the Abbott districts, which is a very serious question, and we're one of them. And he said that we can no longer continue giving the Abbott districts all the money we're giving them. Asbury happens to only pay 26% of their taxes to the school. I'm really concerned about this because this is really going to affect us, affect taxpayers, plus the fact we have all the pilot programs that do not pay school tax. So all this is being taken into consideration, but I think it's something that the city management better start thinking about. Also in one of the articles it said that we were 64% higher than the average as far as our budgets are concerned. In other words, our budget is bloated. So we have to do something about that. 64% is very, very high. The other thing is that we, um, they said that we had 577 school districts and there's only 565 municipalities. So there's something is gonna be done and we better start thinking about it soon because we are an Abbott district and people are tired of giving money to Abbott districts. There was over 300 people there yesterday, all screaming and yelling about Asbury Park and other districts that get all this money and see no results. So we have to start thinking about that because it's gonna happen. If it's not this year, it's gonna be next year. So let's think about it. The other thing I wanted to add, I read the ordinance, which is unusual for me to read the whole thing, about the set-asides, and I called Cindy about it. The set-aside was for minorities, women, veterans, and um, small business. But then when you read the ordinance, it doesn't say anything about veterans and small business. So I, I want the city manager to answer that, because I understand he wrote the ordinance about that. And the other thing is, I want them to put definitions. What is a minority? Because if you look at the census from 2010, 51% were black in Asbury, 36% was white, and 25% was Hispanic. So how do you, what does the word minority mean? I think you should put that in the ordinance. I don't know, I know the ordinance passed last week, but I think we're in within the 20 days to have it corrected. So what are we gonna do about that? I wanna know who the minority is in this situation. So, that's it. Answer the ordinance first. The set aside ordinance defines minorities at the state level which is women, um, whatever the minority population is, which is in this case, everyone but white, black, Hispanic, Asian, um, et cetera. It didn't, under this proposed ordinance, other the change ordinance, it didn't require a set amount. Um, for example, women are aimed at 10%. This is the first time in the city's history that I've understood that we're actually taking the ordinance seriously and trying to make it much more palatable to give businesses across the board, to give business and of city contracts across the board. So how it's gonna be implemented is more important than the definitions because it's going to go to a wide spectrum of everyone anyway. It's, it's how it's bid, not the definition, because the way the ordinance is written is it's gonna be bid based upon the state registration, which is a database. So if you're in that database, you get the notification anyway. So if we went to hire a, a conflict interest attorney, that database would then be searched. Everyone gets it who's notified. It doesn't matter who you are. It, the goal of the ordinance was to allow for everyone to have an equal opportunity with then certain amount of percentages to be awarded. 
right now we're not even close to doing the analysis of what and who should be getting targeted. So that's why we did it this way. It, it's really going to take some time to review all the contracts that the city has in order to target where to go. So the first goal is to not worry about the definitions. It's actually to, to hit a broad swath of everyone who's registered in the state database. And we implore everyone to register for that state database. I'm sorry, the sun's right in my face. Is so that they get notified. Not only is it on the website, but then there'll be a solicitation for contracts that the city offers for everyone to bid on. And that's the key. It's, it's gonna be a moving change in the ordinance as time goes on. So I understand your concern, it's a valid point, but the definitions are gonna change. The target's gonna be recommended to change. We actually have to see what's out there first because it's never been done before. Uh, but don't you have to change the ordinance? You don't have a percentage for small business or veterans. No, because we kept it from the, the original ordinance. And that's, we don't know who's gonna apply for what. So it's gonna be out to everyone. Until we can actually see who's applying, who's applying where, for what project, that's step two. Step one is we actually have to identify what we're bidding out in order to target everyone. So it's, it's gonna take some time to get it right, but the previous ordinance didn't actually let us get it right. This, this now will let us bid out things into a more inclusive manner. And it's gonna take some time because what actually first has to happen is the city staff has to review the contracts that will be up for bid and procured and how to target populations. So the state has a database uh, that we're gonna be using to reach out to everyone who's on that database. So if, we, if Fred resigned tomorrow as city attorney and we needed to look for a new attorney, we would solicit from all those attorneys on, in that database. And that database covers everybody. So until we can find, one, what contracts we need to bid out, what, what procurement on construction projects need to be done, until we start identifying that, we're not gonna be able to change any of the figures. So we really just left them alone because we didn't know at this time. But this ordinance I anticipate changing in the next 18 months to 24 months once we start it rolling. But we don't know yet because it's never been done. I know, but why did you put a percentage for the uh First two. Because that's the way the old ordinance was. And we just kept it the same because, you know, the first way you had it was good. Now you just blinded me. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you. Because um, we just kept it the same. That's all. And as we get, continue along the process, we're going to have to make some changes. We know that. But it's the first time this has ever been done. Okay. I have, I have one more thing. I know the buzzer went off. But in the code book, it said that... Uh, I don't know, the code book has been changed now, so this might have been taken out. That nobody could take a vacation in, in the, as city employee during the May 30th Memorial Day weekend and Labor Day. Is that still a, a rule? That was in the code book. That sounds personnel policy. That doesn't sound I, like code. What? It might have been a union because, contract. Because we're a resort area. It might have been a union contract. No. It was in the bloom. It was in the bloom white contract. I was present. It was there. If it was in the code, we don't have the answer. We'll get back to you. What? We don't. We can't answer that right now. We don't have the code in front of us. We'll get back to you. <laughs> okay. As far as your worries about the school and everything, I, I appreciate them. Uh, I think the entire state is worrying about the Abbott districts. The governor does not have the power to change the Abbott districts. He may think he does, but he does not. It is a Supreme Court decision of New Jersey. Uh, we're all concerned about a 23-cent gasoline tax. Uh, this council has been, I think, the most fiscally responsible one in decades. Uh, we're looking at everything. We do not understand how he wants to reduce the sales tax from 7% to 6%, which would mean $1.4 billion lost revenue every year. <coughs> you got to make that up with taxes someplace. So yes, we are keeping our eyes on everything. We are looking not th this year. If we're looking at this year's budget, we're in trouble. We're looking at future year's budget. And we're looking at everything in the newspapers, just as you are. So we are on top of it. Thank okay. you. All right. Good evening, my name is Patrick Ryan. I live at 503 6th Avenue in Asbury Park. Uh, a couple issues regarding the beach. Uh, one is something I've been waiting for you guys to do, and you have it, is I think it's time for some no smoking beaches. 
I think you could easily put in an ordinance that makes something like the odd beaches smoking beaches, the even beaches non-smoking beaches, because it's a bitch when you sit there and all of a sudden somebody's got a cigar and it blows up wind on you when you're sitting there. So it would be easy to do. I don't know why you haven't done it. I think you should do it. Uh, also, beaches, the dog beach. Um, I think there's something that you guys need to consider in terms of ordinances and rules that it should be something that provides the most lenient, the most open, the least restrictive, the most accommodating for the most people. Um, frankly, I think the dog beach ought to be open 24 hours a day. Uh, not the least of which is you might want to consider that if you have the dog beach open during the day, you can charge a fee for dogs. Dogs may need to have a dog pass just like people need to have a dog pass, which might raise some revenue. But in the meantime, if you go down there in the morning and you see at 8.30 there's 20, 30 people and dogs having a wonderful time, and at 8.31 it's totally vacant that it's empty, that minimally you need to extend the time for people to be there because you're supposed to be accommodating the most people that you can. Um, the other issue is I'm delighted that you are doing something about Sunset Lake. Please put every ounce of energy you have into Sunset Lake because it is in the middle of this town, when you drive into town, when you go to the convention center, you go right by Sunset Lake that absolutely stinks. So something has to be done seriously with some money, probably behind it. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, uh, Warner Baumgartner. Um, Eileen, I really appreciate your comments about uh, Mr. Stewart, our library director. And as the uh, president of the library board, I, I thank you and I uh, also concur that he is uh, well deserved of the award that he received. If it were not for uh, Mr. Stewart over the last uh, 30 years or so, I probably would not have had the encouragement to start the uh, Historical Society and uh, become city historian and uh, preserve uh, uh, many city records uh, for future posterity. So he's been a good mentor to me and he's been uh, a great uh, person for Asbury Park to keep the library going under hard times. So thank you for mentioning him. Uh, it's not often people think about the library. Um, as far as Sunset Lake, put me down. Um, I'm gonna pick up an application. I've lived across from Sunset Lake for over 30 years and I'm always over there picking up trash and uh, pruning the trees and uh, taking care of my little view corridor in front of my house, so I'd be happy to, uh, to serve on such a commission and uh, get things going. Um, the third item is recall Kennedy Park and the sliver of Kennedy Park that was sold off to become a parking lot. Uh, my question regarding that is, why is it still unimproved? Uh, my understanding is that Developers are required to improve their lots to make them parking lots. That is, pave them properly, grade them, landscape them. This is still a pile of gravel where cars are parking, and uh, people are actually parking in the public right of way. They're taking up uh, about six extra spaces that probably should be landscaped with at least a lawn and some kind of a uh, decorative berm as required by the other developments on Lake Avenue down there. So uh, perhaps um, someone can comment on what the status of that, uh, that sliver of property is and why it's in the condition it's in. That's it. Honestly, I don't know why it hasn't been improved, but we'll look into it and I'll either send you an email or report back to the next meeting. Okay, that'd be great. Yeah. I can also indicate that although the um, transaction has been approved by the mayor and council, the ah. actual closing hasn't happened yet. Ah, There's a it, redevelopment agreement associated with this, and there are some steps that still have to be finalized in order for the closing to take place. Interesting. Warner, I'd like to report back that it hasn't been closed upon yet, and they don't have to do <laughs> Okay. <it. laughs> well, that begs the question, then, why are they being permitted to use it for parking uh, if the deal has not been consummated yet? 
um, something else that probably should be addressed. Um, maybe it might encourage them to get the deal uh, done if they were prohibited from using it as a parking lot, which uh, they're doing currently, and taking public property, uh, encroaching on a public right of way in doing so. All right, thank you very much. I'll pick up an application for the, uh, the Sunset Lake thing. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Uh, Ernest Magnoli, 400 Deal Lake Drive, the Santander. Uh, I was here at the last meeting, and I'm here again at this meeting, expressing concern for the activities in Asbury Park between the hours of 10 p.m. and 3 a.m. Uh, I like to um, come out, observe, try and help as a citizen to document and to support our police department that I feel uh, are endangered by um, scores, um, thousands of people that come here, uh, at least in my observation and opinion, uh, for one sole purpose, and that's for the overconsumption of alcohol, maybe mixed with drugs and, and, and violence. Uh, last weekend, uh, one person put another one through Conover's plate glass window and I happened to witness the heroic efforts of the Asbury Park Police uh, control and contain that situation, but uh, I just feel that it's, it's untenable that they have to constantly be placed in a position where the, the city condones and invites people in for the reason to uh, literally break the law, and yet they expect the police to somehow curtail, contain, and keep citizens safe. So it's... Uh, it's, in my opinion, uh, not a tenable situation. The papers are reporting it. We just had a, uh, an article in the Coaster come out about the statistics of uh, crime, arrests, uh, weapons, uh, drugs, uh, and other uh, violent crimes. Um, if, in fact, you Google the FBI statistics, Asbury is uh, considered in the top 10 most violent, dangerous places in New Jersey. I know when I put that out, everyone says that I'm mean-spirited, I hate Asbury, and uh, I hate police, and I hate everyone else, but they're FBI statistics. And uh, th they were quite concerning. I mean, 1,200 plus arrests, uh, 48 weapons, um, drugs, um, vehicles uh, impounded. And in my opinion, uh, living here 10 years, this happens between 10 p.m. and 3 a.m., uh, at will. It, it, it's, someone has to step in and protect us all. There's children involved, there's noise being made, there's property being destroyed, over-serving taking place, there's no parking for businesses that have been approved to bring in a thousand or two thousand customers. They park on curbs, they park in crosswalks, they endanger people. I was almost run down by someone in the crosswalk and if you follow the correlation with the national news, Asbury's primed for uh, some serious events, and uh, not to mention all the lawsuits we already have for boardwalk problems and, and uh, et cetera. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tracy Rogers, Monroe Avenue. Um, I want to uh, first congratulate the city on the grant and let everybody know that these grants are hard to obtain, but we make sure we uh, come together as a community to actually facilitate what the principles are by having these community outreach meetings and reaching some serious agenda issues that we can actually come forth and reach some goals. Uh, <clears throat> I had a strange phone call. Uh, I tell people about stuff that gets emailed to me, and it was a, a a flyer about recreation for kids <coughs> with Monmouth County. And I was eating somewhere and I asked a young lady that I knew, did she have children? Because I mean, her conversate. And I said, did you know about this camp? It's only three days, $30. And well, she said she couldn't afford it, so I said I was gonna sponsor. So I called up and it's for, it was for Asbury, a group of Asbury kids. And the person told me on the phone they canceled it because only one person apply for it, and they get that regularly out of Asbury, and it's in Monument County. So I'm wondering, are we really getting out and reaching these families 
on these terrific outdoor projects they have. Uh, and I saw this at the library. Monmouth County has a lot of <laughs> a lot of things, and you know, how are we integrating ourselves with it? You know, I'm not blaming the council. I'm not blaming anybody. Just for one person, and it was only 12 slots. Only one person show up. They had to cancel the thing where I think a bunch of kids would have had a great time with this extreme uh, uh, sports or, or biking or whatever it was. Um, also, I don't know if we can talk about, it says on there, about a litigation on a tax lien. You're talking about executive session. Uh, I don't know if you're allowed to talk. I think I may know about this litigation, which I brought up dealing with some of the issues and and uh, uh, the vacant property I mean not the, uh, the rental property are any properties being taken out of the original ordinance of what is going to be considered as summer rental properties that's it I like to answer the recreation part uh, as of yesterday, we had over 100 children signed up for recreation, and we're getting more in each day. So the program is moving along successfully. I'm just saying, are we reaching, you know, like I said, this, this thing was like canceled now because only one person, when they had 12 slots, <coughs> to some well, We have a list of activities that we um, came up with earlier this year. And uh, I believe you can get one, find one over there. And if you think it needs to be added, just call Alicia Floyd tomorrow and suggest it to the council, the recreation committee. All right. As far as the uh, summer rental ordinance is concerned, the proposed change that has been brought forward is to clarify the definition of summer rental so that it would apply only to residential properties which constitute the primary residence of the owners thereof and contain no more than two individual dwelling units. There's been no change to the other language that says that this section shall not apply to rooming houses or boarding houses and that it shall not apply to apartment units. Um, it's just clarifying that uh, those residences that are, are would be eligible are those that constitute the primary residence of the owners and contain no more than two individual dwelling units so that if you are in a multifamily dwelling that has three or more, it would, uh, it would not be eligible. Why would that not be eligible? Say you had a four, four apartment. Well, though, because the, the original language of the ordinance said that this section shall not apply to apartment units. So if you're in a, if you have a, a dwelling that has that many units, some of them likely are apartments and would be disqualified anyway. But it's just a, a further clarification that the intent here is. Um, such that if you are in a two-family structure and the owner occupies one of them, that it would be permissible to summer rent out the other, uh, the, the other premise, the apartment that's in the two-family unit, because um, theoretically the owner is there on site and can oversee what's taking place so you're not dealing with an absentee landlord and that type of situation. And that's kind of the, the rationale that has been brought forward about why we should consider allowing um, an apartment if you're in a two-family unit, but um, yeah, I agree with that. not greater than that. Okay. Good evening. My name is Karen Alexander. I live at 518 Asbury Avenue. Um, I wanted to speak about an act of vandalism and violence that occurred in our neighborhood on Saturday not well, it was technically Sunday morning, between 2.30 and I believe 3.40 a.m., someone maliciously vandalized three vehicles parked on Emory Avenue in front of the Emory store, banging out, smashing out their back <laughs> windows and their front windows, and on the van, the side windows, so many, and, and on other vehicles. That's my neighbor. She was one of the victims. And I was in line, I heard. I was next. People did notify the police. Um, it's not clear who called 911 or who called the police department directly, but 
The guy was able to continue his rampage. He even vandalized some cars down the street. And nobody showed up for 25 to 30 minutes later. The guy was gone, the damage was done, and the people were left devastated. All I heard in the morning was screaming and crying. Everybody works. These, all these people are working people. Um, they have no collision on several of the vehicles. It's liability only. And other people have, she just bought her car. So she had to have collision and liability. But she, as she was crying, she has to pay a deductible and she has to take off a day from work because of some horrific thing that somebody did. I mean, they didn't get a very good response from the police department because they did inquire as to when they were gonna come out and look at the video that the Emory store had. And the, the owner allowed them to view the video. And uh, it was a guy sitting there, uh, apparently he was a Latino, and he was on the phone and he got off and he just started beating everybody's vehicles up. And that's really scared and it's disheartening. Um, I know the police department has a lot to do, but that was something that needed to be taken care of. And when the people wanted a response the next day, they didn't get it right away. But talking about community kind of banding together, people did stop by. And when they stopped by, they got out, they gave their condolences. It hurt everybody in the neighborhood to see something like that. I mean, that kind of violence is just totally unwarranted. Somebody just going that kind of crazy. And I can't even imagine, I can't even imagine if a person was out there walking down the street when this maniac was doing what he was doing. So I don't know what we can do as a community. I mean, these people had to pay the price. They had to come out of pocket. And it's still scary because we all look outside now. Our neighborhood was safe. We thought so. So I don't know how you could help. No, thank you. Uh, I read a little bit about it, so I'm not going to comment about it. But <coughs> Michael's on vacation. But Chief Teddy, if you can give him some I contact information tomorrow. where he can get in touch with you tomorrow so we can follow up as far as the police response and everything else and to give you the hard, the hard numbers. What time the phone call came in, when the police were there. Because what I read on one of the social medias was it was some madman just going up and down the streets with a baseball bat. And the cops were looking for him, but he went this way, the police. So I, 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 we don't know the facts, I don't know the facts, but whatever we know, if you give your contact information to Chief Kenny, he will get in touch with you to follow up on this, exactly what happened. Thank you. Thank you. And sorry it happened to you. It's just like, it's a crazy world. I mean, it is. Hold on one second, Jerry. Hello, Mayor and Council, Jerry. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Hello, Mayor and Council, Jerry Scrano, Long Branch. Um, Mayor, thanks for bringing up about the gas tax, but coming up 23%, 23 cents. Another reason why we need GPS and decals on all the vehicles, because it's hurting all of us. The other thing, um, Rita was talking about the governor with the Abbott district. Um, he was saying that 31 municipalities in the Abbott district use $88 billion and 500 municipalities plus use $97 billion. And he said, that's why they're gonna have to tweak it. He also brought up, like in Jersey City, you have people on the pilot program and tax abatement program paying the same amount of taxes for million dollar views as people that live in poor neighborhood in a normal house. He said, the system gotta be straightened out about this giveaway in so many words. The other thing is, because of the lawsuit with the splinters on the boardwalk, well, we may have to add the jellyfish and the dog shark that were on TV. That way, people enter at their own risk in the ocean and we're not liable for that because I never got paid for a splinter in my foot, and I'm sure everybody in this room never got paid for a splinter in their foot. The other thing is, um, 
we had something good happen today in Asbury, we have a lot, but the moving of that house should be exploited, showing that you can save historical buildings, they don't have to be demolished, you just need thinking out of the box and moving them, and we should make a big deal that we're doing it here. Even though only one house got saved and all the houses that got demolished, that would have been a thing to, to help us out. Okay, the thing is, um, the people that want to rent their houses, two family even, the, uh, the other apartment, I think that going against affordable housing, but the other thing, if they're gonna do A, B, and B, I mean Airbnb, and maybe we should collect hotel taxes on them, because if they're gonna run their house as a business, maybe they, their property tax should be different. You can't have it both ways. You can't skim off the top and not pay the piper. So if people want to register their houses for summer rentals like that, let them pay a higher tax than the neighbors that don't do it, because why should the neighbor put up with noisy people coming and going? It's just an idea that you can look into. I don't know if it's legal, but it's something to look into. So when are we getting decals on all the cars now? Yeah, I'm done. All right. Yeah. Yep. I, I believe decals are on all the cars. Not on all the cars. All the cars except police and. I can understand. Okay. Understanding the coverage car, but what about the city manager's car? The decal on it. He doesn't have a. Car. That's my personal. Oh, you didn't car. get one. <laughs> he doesn't have a car. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, you'll look into the Airbnb and the hotel tax thing because. I, I know that the director of property improvement is actually already looking into that, and I expect that there likely are going to be revisions to the code being brought forward at some point in the future to try to deal with that situation. Right now, this was the most urgent matter that we wanted to bring forward about the summer rental, but he, I know he's taken courses, and um, it's a new issue, obviously, that's come about in recent times, and towns are trying to deal with it. So I, I would expect that something will be brought forward about that topic sometime in the no, I'm glad you're looking at it forward. And what about the jellyfish and the dogfish that was on TV? Um, are you going to have signs about that two to one people? Because we, I mean, also, people Karen, can. You know, if you warn people, they can still sue you, right? It's not. <laughs> well, I'm just saying we're getting saying, sued for a splinter, thirty-two thousand dollars. I mean, it's just unbelievable, that kind of stuff. But thank you for your effort. Thank you. My name is Lester Green. I live at 1224 and a half Monroe Avenue on the west side. Um, I have a uh, question um, about the keeping up of vacant lots, especially on the west side. Um, and I want to, first of all, you know, in the process of like, you know, commend the, the people who work for the city who I've been in contact many times. Is in fact, next door to me, and I own 1224 and a half, I own the house, it's a single family house. Next door, there's a 1226, there's an abandoned building that's been abandoned over three years. And when I contacted the city people, the, the property, they said that, you know, about cleaning it up because like every, you know, the grass overloads, you know, dirt and everything like that. In fact, even the police, one time they were there at night looking for somebody that had flew something there, the grass was so high, they couldn't even find what they were looking for, you know. And it's, it's a safety hazard not even for them, you know, looking for, you know, weapons or whatever else is going on. And I wonder if, you know, and how I get it done, like I'm, you know, be bugging people. I call up, you know, so you know, call the manager and say, you know, when can you come do this? Is there any type of schedule as far as keeping up abandoned lots that where owners have left the building? And this building is like actually starting to fall apart. I know, you know, is there any type of schedule as far as like ridden the neighborhood or that type of thing? Because like I know, you know, like, you know, the east side has kept up much better than the west side. And like I bought on the west side because I wanted to live on the west side. In fact, you know, I moved from New York down here, I'm a retired fire department. And it's important, I think, to, you know, for, just for the communities, we talk about all these grants, other things, but how do you keep up the community, especially the communities that have historically have a lot of issues? And like I said, it's a plight for me to see this, and I think something should be done as far as some type of ongoing thing. The city people themselves are good at doing when I call them up, you know, but I have to keep calling people. But is there some type of schedule to keep these lots cleaned up and keep the grass cut? And if the building's been abandoned for a number of times, it needs to be, you know, taken down or do whatever because people can go in there, you know, squat, et cetera. But I think something needs to be done and I wanna know what's going on with that. No, there isn't. And it's one of the big issues that we have in code enforcement that they 
there is no system in place. Code enforcement is the worst department when it comes to technology. This should be something that is simple to do. Um, yesterday, Mr. McEwing, the director, met for the second time with the vendor, um, geo 3 Systems, of getting the software fine-tuned. We should have a software in place. We're hoping by the end of the summer, early fall, that we can actually do this more efficiently. Um, we're short-staffed there right now. There's only two inspectors down from a height of five. Um, we are hiring another inspector or two. It's posted on the website. But right now, I'll be honest with you, no, we don't, because we don't have, other than paper and pencil, a good way to do it. Big deficiency, we've talked about it before in the last six or seven months. We're working on fixing it to make it easier to, for the code staff to actually do this. Um, while you were speaking, I just emailed the code director in Public Works to get out there and inspect the property tomorrow. So we know it's a major, major deficiency that we have there. Everything in that department is paper and pencil, and it, it drives me crazy. We're fixing it. It's going to take us some time, but it's the only way we're going to be able to get that is more, to be more efficient since we're short-staffed there. So please, if you see it, call. It doesn't bother us. We'll get out there. Someone will be out there tomorrow. But shouldn't, since we adopted an abandoned property list, Shouldn't this property be on that list if it's been three years? I don't know if it's on the list. Can we check that out and find out? If That's it's also not? in the email. Why and it's not? Well, if he pays his tax, I mean, it's dilapidated as it, as it may be, and, and yep. maybe it's a code hazard fire police issue. If he pays his taxes, he's not on the oh, yeah. list. No, yes, he, he the, can they can the still list. be on okay. the list. They have taxes. to file and make plans to fix it, or else we can start foreclosure on it. Are you sure about that? Yes. There, there yes. are standards. Yes. There, there are standards okay. to it. Okay. But we'll, double, we'll, we'll check. And as I mentioned previously in meetings here, um, we once we get staff ramped up again and the software installed, we'll be able to. The goal is to be able to do another list, you know, September, October. Okay. When, when you get the answer from Mr. McEwen, if you could just yeah, email. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Hi everyone, Phyllis Mifuchi, Deal Lake Drive, 510 Deal Lake Drive. Um, I'm one of those people who applied for a summer CO about two weeks ago, and then I got a call on behalf of my client, and then I got a call from uh, Barbara Van Wagner saying that they, it was a two family and it was not allowed to be um, authorized as a summer CO. So what I'd like to ask is that the council please consider a two family as one of those allowed to be a summer CO. I don't really see the difference in a single family being an absentee owner. If you're renting out your house, you're leaving and you're not there anyway, so you're already an absentee owner. Um, I know that the summer, whole summer rental thing is new to Asbury Park. We don't want to become another Belmar and have, you know, a lot of um, disrupting in the evening. But I think if we follow the rules that what we've been doing so far with Belmar, they have what they call an animal house list. And if there have been three or more noise violations within 12 months, the owner has to put up um, a $4,000 bond, and that gets held by the city for four years, and they don't, they don't get that back for four years um, unless, if they've had other disturbances. So it helps keep, it helps monitor who the homeowner is renting to, and also my particular homeowner purchased their house in January rehabilitated the upstairs. It's a two family, so the upstairs unit is the second and third floor with five bedrooms, and then the first floor with two bedrooms. It makes a lot more sense to rent it as a summer rental with five bedrooms than it does an annual rental. And they've been very, very strict in not renting to a, a group of adults under 30. They strictly are only renting to families, and that's something that I've been enforcing as a real estate agent, and I think if we express what the paradigm is in Asbury Park, that we don't want a bunch of 20-somethings coming here and, and renting houses, we want it to be for families or responsible adults, and we spread that word, and the real estate agents enforce it and also inform people who come to invest in Asbury Park, they'll, they'll understand, I think, with rules, and, 
and with that vision expressed, I think that we can keep a handle on it because there's a lot of homes that still need to be purchased and rehabilitated. And if you make it difficult for an investor to purchase because of all these strict rules, they're not gonna do it. They're not gonna come here, they're not gonna buy the houses, and we're not gonna move forward. Thank you. Motion to close public session. Move it. Second. Move. All in favor? Aye. Just to clarify, Phyllis, my understanding of the reading of the ordinance, and this is why I'm glad this is just the first reading, is that two families fine if the owner lives in it, right? You're saying the owner does not live in any part of it, and that's the problem. Yeah, just it's to not clarify. practical for a homeowner investor to live in it if they're buying it as an investor. As an investor. We have three sets of minutes tonight, June 13, 2006, workshop meeting, June 15, 2016, executive session, and June 15, 2016, regular meeting. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes? Move it. Move it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Move on to consent agenda. The first uh, resolution is 2016-263. Appointments to the business committee. The people uh, who are appointed through this resolution would be Marilyn Schlashback, which would be the mayor's appointment, Adam Nelson, the mayor's appointment, Deputy Mayor uh, Amy Quinn, Council Representative, Jackie Pappas, Chamber of Commerce Representative, Michael Capabianco, City Manager, Jen Hampton, Parlor Gallery, Bianca Freda, Interwoven, Larry Stein, Appliance Brokers, Kathy Kelly, Paranormal, Leslie Castellini, Castellini. Castellini's acu acupuncture, Russell Lewis, Watermark, Reggie Flimlin, Juice Basin, Jackie Sharp, Purple Glazed Donuts, Larry Dembron, the Asbury Hotel, Phyllis Butita Mafusi, Conover Agency, and Isaac Jones, New Life Barbershop. The next resolution is 2016-75, approving special events applications. I I thought we, it says the term to expire 12 31 16. I thought we said since it's almost July, we said maybe it's 17. I sent an email today. I don't know if you guys got it. Okay, I didn't. I can revise that. That's not a problem. Okay, yes. It, why appoint somebody for five months? Although, you know what? Appointing somebody for five, if they don't show up in five months, then we can appoint somebody in their place in 2017. You can throw them off if they don't show up. Mm -hmm. what, whatever you want. I just. Okay, all right, put it in 2017. Resolution 2016 275, approving special events, wedding applications as presented uh, this evening, June 29, 2016. Resolution 2016 276, resolution authorizing the payment of payroll in the amount of $954,298.61. Resolution 2016 277, resolution. To credit sewer account for 1211 3rd Avenue, Block 2205, Lot 8. Resolution 2016 278, award a contract for Regional Contribution Agreement Project 110, Monroe Avenue. And 2016 279, ratifying phone poll for extending the Sunset Avenue Bridge bid opening until July 12, 2016. Can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda, please? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Aye. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Individual resolutions. The first one is 2016 80. 280, authorizing approval to add signatories to the city bank accounts. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? <coughs> Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-281, resolution authorizing the payment of bills in the amount of $517,305.62. Mayor Moore advised me that he will be abstaining from account number 6-01-23-220-000-209. have a motion, please. Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore with your abstention? Yes. 
Resolution 2016-282, Resolution for the Emergency Temporary Appropriation to Amend 2016 Temporary Budget. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Abstain. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. <coughs> Resolution 2016-283, <coughs> excuse me. Resolution of the City of Asbury Park making application to New Jersey Local Finance Board pursuant to NJSA, <coughs> oh, excuse me, 48 colon 3-1 as SEC and previous approvals by said board. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Yes. No comments or questions. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> something else. Jumped ahead there. <laughs> Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016 284, resolution authorizing the issuance of not to exceed $7 million tax anticipation notes of 2016 in the city of Asbury Park in the county of Monmouth, state of New Jersey. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-285, authorizing a lien on block 3105, lot 6, 574 Cookman Avenue. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Yeah, questions. Okay, so this is the old Leggett's Pharmacy, mm -hmm. Cookman and Emory, where the building's not safe and the owner does not want to fix it. So the city's going to fix it and put a lien on it. Correct. But we should also, if Fred has to do any legal work, everything should be lien. Not, yes. Not, not just the construction, anything and everything to do with this since the owner will not step up and take responsibility for his own building. Correct. Okay, I just wanna make sure all bills, it's like an escrow account, it's gonna go, you know, we'll pay, but it goes on his lien. Yes. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-286, authorizing the purchase of a DPW paint machine. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016 287, authorizing the purchase of John Deere 323 loader. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-288, authorizing the purchase of the John Deere 524 loader. Can I have a motion? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Question. What's, What's the loader? What's the difference between the, the 323 and the 524? The $80,000. <laughs> $80,000. And the 524 is the large-scale loader that has the big bucket on it that you would see at a normal construction site. We use that for putting in salt into trucks, moving sand on the beach. The 323 is a smaller removing skid steer. Snow. Removing snow. Um, the 323 is a smaller skid steer. It is almost looks like a little bobcat, um, but it has um, tread, not tires. It'll be able to, for us to move things on and off the beach again for sand. Um, it has a snowblower attachment, so we'll be able to do smaller places like sidewalks. We won't have a person standing there with a shovel or snowblower will be able to blow it out through that. Um, it's much more maneuverable machine. Um, for example, DPW is really excited to start using it to get behind some people's properties. Um, one of the issues that we have is, we, is when we have an abandoned property that we get a call on, we can't get into a backyard, but with the skid steer, it's smaller, it, we can get in there and actually cut brush. So it's a multi-purpose machine, small versus big. Thank you. Any other questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-289, authorizing the purchase of a generator. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. 
Comments or questions? Question. Does this include installation? The price includes installation, concrete pad, removal of everything um, internally, um, a midnight or late night switch over so it doesn't interfere with police operations. It is soup to nuts. The entire city hall installation, removing of equipment, it's everything. What percentage of the building will now be online with this generator? 100%. Including council chambers? The entire building. Right okay. now, um, approximately 55, 65% of the police department is and nothing else. Um, it makes no sense when you do this um, to, to separate panels. It's easier and more economical to do the entire building all at once. Was all H HVAC, elevator, everything will work. Was there more than one bidder? Uh, this is a state contract price um, for 230000 Looking at other pricing per kilowatt, it's below what we would pay if we went out to bid on it. It's a good price. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Council yeah, Member Chief. How bad do we need it? We don't have one. If, if we have a power outage, the police department goes down. I mean, remember Sandy? It was a disaster. Okay. Yeah, the police, Thank and you. it will also allow for other things when we need warming or cooling stations, we can use this room. Um, it, the emergency command center was run out of here, which you couldn't run when there was no generator. It's something that is much, much needed here. And before you start talking, I just caught you. Um, one of the things that we're going to explore is the generator we have here to move it over to the senior center, <coughs> if, it, if it still is capable. But the odds are against it, but we are going to look to, to see the size of it. It'll be so close. Does our fire department have a generator? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016 290 authorizing the purchase of a fueling system. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? What is it? It, it, it makes sure. Uh, currently at DPW, everything is kept by hand. Um, when the school or any other entity needs to, to use fuel from us, they actually have to write in a ledger book. What this will do is force people to enter a code, mileage, we'll be able to track mileage, who's using what. Right now we're on the honor system. This has been needed for probably 25 years. Any other comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016 291 authorizing the purchase of a fire official vehicle. I have a motion, please. Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Question. And it's not just about this vehicle, it's about the previous trucks and the future cars or SUVs. They're coming with soup to nuts, which they should, but I agree. Why not put in the GPS now? For the, the cars? Yeah. It's going to get done in the fall once we get the full budget adopted. That's why it's just not here. We still have some cars that need to be added. The police department's getting their quote now, so it's going to be in the fall once we get everything added. That's And it's $20. Okay. Is it 100? No, I'm sorry. It's $20 a month. It's $80 to install. It's going to come just once we get the full budget adopted. Okay, but the but there's a ton of money left in this. All this, all these vehicles are coming out of a bond ordinance, so it's not like we're just taking the money out of the current fund. Current yeah, no, fund. They, it'll be charged to to the to the capital accounts. When we can charge it to capital, get charged to capital. These will have will it installed. Easier to do it now, though. No. The, you buy, I mean, just because you're buying a whatever 2017 Ford. And then you're spending five thousand dollars for wireless communications, four thousand dollars for lights, two thousand dollars for a radio, blah blah blah. Why not just put in the GPS at the same time? Because we need possession of it. That's why. Okay. It's not done by at the factory level. It's done on our level. So once we get the car, then we can install the GPS. And, and all these other things are being done at the factory level. These are done here. 
But the GPS, we don't need to do council resolutions for either. The sooner the better for every vehicle to have GPS. I agree with Jared. These two vehicles that are being replaced, um, the fire official and the building department, are the last of the 10-year-old Durangos, which are experiencing engine and transmission problems. So they had to go. We're going to keep them in active duty, but we don't know how long they're going to last. We're just going to run them to the ground. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-292, authorizing the purchase of a vehicle for the building department. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-293, resolution accepting bid for the sale of certain real property which is no longer needed for public use, Block 1003, Lot 68, 14, 13 and a half, Springwood Avenue. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-294, authorizing change order number three for Springwood Avenue Park. <coughs> have a motion, please? Move it. Um, I'm recommending that this be tabled. Uh, the, there was a new price that came in, and I don't like it. It's too high, and I believe that it should be lowered. So this resolution should be tabled or just withdrawn. Move it. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? <sighs> resolution 2016-295, resolution approving certain liquor licenses for 2016-2017 licensing years. The uh, licensing establishments on this resolution would be Cookman Restaurant Group, LLC, AP Restaurant 1, doing business as Stella Marina, Raspberry Moon Inc., doing business as Moonstruck Restaurant and Lounge, Asbury Equity Liquors, LLC, doing business as Pascal and Sabine, Siri Sawachi Inc. doing business as Mac on Main. Don John Teza doing business as Press Room and Fish. Steinbach Liquor License LLC doing business as Seafood Boney Reed. And House of Independence LLC doing business as Beer Garden. Can I have a motion to approve this resolution, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-296, a resolution approving liquor license with special conditions for DB Ventures, LLC, doing business as Johnny Max for the 2016-2017 licensing year. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Staying. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-297, a resolution approving a liquor license with special conditions for Porta at Asbury Park, LLC, doing business as Porta for the 2016-2017 licensing year. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? It's staying. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-298, resolution amending temporary appropriations for 2016. Motion to table. We have nothing, do we? No. Thank you, sir. Table. Do we have a handout? No. no. Table. Motion, please. Moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Resolution 2016-299, authorizing the purchase of a 2017 MAC GU 432 cab and chassis and dump and body with plow. This resolution was provided to you, to you this evening. Can I have a motion, please? Moved. Second. Comments or questions, please? The only thing, no big deal. The fourth whereas. Awarding the purchase of the loader and things should be changed to the truck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any 
Any other comments or questions? Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We're on to ordinances. Ordinances for introduction. Ordinance 2016-28. Bond ordinance providing for Fourth Avenue improvements by and in the <coughs> city of Asbury Park. The County of Mom, the state of New Jersey, appropriating two million seven hundred thousand, therefore, including a grant expected to be received from the New Jersey Department of Transportation in the amount of three hundred and forty two thousand two hundred and seventy four two hundred and forty seven dollars, and authorizing the issuance of two million seven hundred thousand dollars in bonds and notes of the city to fin finance a part of the cost thereof. Can I have a motion to move it? Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for July 13, 2016. Ordinance 2016-29, establishing a restricted... Establishing a restricted parking space for use by handicapped persons at property located at 1109 Grand Avenue des designated a block, as block 3401 lot 8 in the city of Asbury Park and amending and supplementing section 7-36 entitled handicapped parking of chapter 7 traffic of the revised general ordinances of the city of Asbury Park, New Jersey. Can I have a motion to introduce please? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public is hearing is scheduled for July 13, 2016. Ordinance 2016 30, an ordinance amending and supplementing Section 12 8.1 entitled Summer Rental Defined, a Section 12 8 Summer Rental Regulations of Chapter 12. Building and Construction of the Code of the City of Asbury Park, New Jersey. Can I have a motion to introduce this ordinance, please? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Mayor Moore? Yes, this is the first reading. Yes, yes, yes. it's the first yeah, reading. I, I think we're all going to be doing a lot of reading and asking questions. So at the next meeting, you may want to have the department heads here or beforehand, just because some good points were brought up tonight and it's new to all of us, so there will be questions. Public hearing is scheduled for July 13, 2016. Now on to second reading, public hearing for ordinance 2016-27 and ordinance amending and supplementing section 7-20 Entitled One Way Streets to Chapter 7 Traffic of the Code of the City of Asbury Park, New Jersey. Can I have a motion to open 2016 27 to the public? Move it. Second. Hello, uh, Warner Baumgartner. Um, I'm glad you've corrected the language in order to uh, get Sunset Avenue um, in its entirety. But I do question the preamble to this whole thing that states that it's at the request of the Asbury Park Police Department for safety purposes. Um, maybe that's a legal technicality that has to be in there, but I think the public really should know that these streets are being changed because that is the guide of the redevelopment plan. The redevelopment plan is the dictating document um, and that's why these streets are being changed, not because the police department wants it done. Um, and I still have some current concerns that I've brought up in prior meetings about the process where infrastructure changes like this are modified from what the plan dictates. I'm still hoping to meet with the manager at one time or perhaps the planner in order to discuss that, you know, the process as to how certain streets do not conform to what the plan says and yet minor changes that might be advantageous are put off indefinitely. Um, there needs to be a, a definite process for doing that. But uh, anyway, that's, that's my comment on this. It's, uh, it's good you're putting it in the codification, but uh, it's certainly something that uh, is dictated by the redevelopment plan, not a public safety matter. Motion to close ordinance 2016-27. Move it. Second. 
Come a motion to adopt ordinance 2016-27. Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? No. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Move it. Move it. Second. Second. Are we all in favor? Yay. <laughs> oh. <laughs>